Welcome to this topic, Understanding Philippine Electrical Code, Series 1. I'm Bernabe Salazar, your resource speaker from Fractal Knowledge Training Services. I need not to introduce myself because you heard more about me in some of the courses I offered online and offline. Let us proceed with the topic. This topic is a series. We may not complete this for one hour, but I invite you to watch it on my website, fractalknowledge.com, because it was organized there. Or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel playlist so that you can watch the other series. I divided this webinar every 15 minutes with the main purpose of keeping you out of your phone and uh, breath some fresh air and enjoy your surrounding, then go back again when you are ready to absorb the information. Because this webinar is full pack of information, you need to make sure you have a rest in between. Since this video is a playlist, you can continue the next video at the time convenient for you. This webinar was conducted at the 22nd Southern Luzon Regional Conference in which hundreds of electrical practitioners attended online and offline. Without so much further ado, let us proceed to the topic of Understanding the Philippine Electrical Code, Series 1. Before we dive in deeper, let me ask this question. In the meanwhile, I will answer it. Why PEC is hard to understand? This is one of the basic questions and feelings of all practitioners with regards to understanding the Philippine Electrical Code. For an electrician, this is a serious matter. For an electrical engineer, this is just a simple focus to understand the code. Now, let us break down the code why it is hard to understand. First, it is written in English language. And English is our second language and reading level is advanced. So, if your reading and comprehension level is not near in advance, understanding PEC will not be easy for you. Second reason why PEC is hard to understand is it takes a considerable amount of time to understand and assimilate the code's meaning, right? This is mainly due to word meaning and its application in the industry. There are few examples and references and few visual interpretation available explaining every article in Philippine Electrical Code. However, if there is, please let me know. I'll buy that book. For now, I have been writing a guide for PEC for some time now. It is my attempt to explain it to young RME and young futures engineers. The third reason why PEC is hard to understand is because electrical trade is complex and the reader needs to make sure he knows what specific topic he wants to release in the PEC. If you check the table of contents of our PEC, you will see a lot of electrical-related topics, right? And some electrical practitioners are still not exposed to some of those in details. Fourth reason why PEC is hard to understand is because the code has many references from other existing codes and manufacturer standards and technical applications. This complicates the basic understanding of Philippine Electrical Code. We are lost in the sea of information. If you are not a dedicated person in our electrical profession, then you need a lot of mental work to do. And more reading time, right? But we are lucky today because Fractal Knowledge Training Services are offering the services to you. You can visit my YouTube channel, Bersa Lazar, and subscribe if you want to keep updated on the series with my endeavor to create more materials that explain PEC 2017 contents. The fifth reason why PEC is hard to understand is because the code changes every three years or five years and practitioners cannot follow the phase of changes. We are lucky because the last edition of PEC 1 was in 2009, then followed the 2017 and nothing came out yet this year, 2022. Balitaan nyo ako if meron ng bagong edition. Alam ko, our IIEE PEC committee will release a new PEC issue. Okay? The sixth reason why PEC is hard to understand is because there was lack of technical courses offering that explain in layman's term the details of PEC 
the application of the code, and the reason behind its article or chapters or section or topics. Okay? The seventh reason why PEC is hard to understand is because the person with electrical profession is unwilling to commit to learn the code by heart. This pertains to the interest and discipline of the individual person. So, sino dito ang passion is to commit and discipline themselves to read PEC 10 pages a day and create learning material for that. Even though others are willing, they have no time. Or others are willing, but there are some barriers like I previously mentioned. Hindi naman lahat problema ang sinasabi ko. Meron ding solusyon. What I've said are not only problems, we also have some solutions. One of the solution that will solve our problems lies in our professional endeavor to crack and understand the Philippine Electrical Code. One is to commit to learning the code. If we are a serious learner, we must avoid complaining too much about PEC. As I saw some practitioner in social media, ang daming daldalan at complain, wala namang solusyon na may offer The way to do it is to commit to learning our own Bible of Electrical Profession. The questions that lies ahead of us are, have we read the PEC from cover to cover? As an RME or as an REE, have we spent at least one hour a week reading it? Or have we read PEC section by section or five pages daily when we are at work? Have we searched for references and compiled them? Have we created and built our own library or references to understand the Philippine Electrical Code? There are questions that need to be answered first. If your answer to those questions is yes, then you have to replace me here and explain it to us because my answer to this question is yes. And I admit, it's totally very hard. It took me a lot of time to cross-reference PEC with the same edition of NEC. And I found something very interesting and I will share those with you during the entire webinar. The second solution is encourage our professional organization and private companies like training centers or review centers to create small courses focusing on different sections of PEC so that everyone interested to learn the code in detail can learn PEC one byte at a time. Some are doing this, but sustainability is the issue. The speaker was not compensated well, and we didn't know his time is spent cracking the code. Gusto kasi natin kasi lagi libre without respecting the time of the resource speaker. Kaya minsan, ang mga technical speaker, hinatamad na rin. We need to pay and give monetary payment to our resource speaker to encourage them to create courses and webinars to understand PEC better. Our role is to pay the information we are getting, especially to those who spend time decoding it. Tama? Sooner or later, we will be there. Kapit lang mga katropa, baka madaming nakikinig o nanunood na kaya pala nila to decode and explain PEC to all in layman's term. The question is, bakit hindi nila ginagawa? If you are the one who knows, please contact me and we will create learning materials. So, in order to create small courses, I'm one of them devoting my free time to decoding PEC Creating presentations is spending a lot of time to make the code easy for RME and REE to understand. That means you need to pay me. <laughs> Biro lang. Maybe some of my training you already paid like design analysis, short circuit calculation, arc flash, protection coordination, grounding and bonding, and others. Probably you attended my seminar already, right? And you recommend it to others because you found out that my idea was full of pragmatic application, which is supposed to be the way we do webinars and trainings dapat. But this webinar I am conducting now is free for you. I didn't receive any payment for this. I spent 50 hours to make this uh, first series. I, it started in 2018 when I have a new PEC 2017 and many more series will come. Baka abutan na ako ng bagong PEC. But that's okay. 
the thing that I expect from you is to subscribe to this channel to support the program, okay? Hit like if you want this topic and share it with other electrical practitioners. Please comment professionally. Be positive and encouraging. This is how electrical profession should be. If you have an encouraging word for me, please comment. If you have a positive criticism and suggestion, please comment also. I hope you will do it. Just to let you know, PEC is only for qualified person. A qualified person means you understand electrical terms, you study basic and complex electrical theory, you are knowledgeable about electrical safety procedures, and you are updated on electrical trade practices. This webinar is not for everyone. It is only for those qualified people. You may be RME, REE, PEE, Electrical Consultant, Electrical Contractor, Insurance, Office of the Building Officials, Personnel, and other related trade on electrical profession. So, what are your objectives in learning the PEC 2017? I just list down some of your objectives I got from your expectation. You are here attending this webinar to understand PEC its use and application. You are here because you want to be guided for proper electrical installation if you are an electrician, electrical contractor, electrical practitioner, building officials, and you want to add up another byte of knowledge from PEC 2017. Third is, you want to avoid improper installation and avoid related danger to life and property. You want your work or your task or your project to be safe and you want to protect life and property that uses the technology of electricity for daily living. Fourth is, you want to validate if the existing installation complied with the code so that your company can address the statutory requirements. Okay, you have four objectives but I have only one objective and that is to make sure I can explain the code to you in a clear an understandable way so that you can have a clear idea of how the code is used okay if that is okay with you just comment if you feel you have a positive word for me it's a good way of encouraging me to proceed with this difficult task now that we know our objective and some barriers why PEC is hard to understand let us dive into PEC I want to start with a short history, then I'll proceed with the structure and arrangement of the code. If you have your PEC 2017, I encourage you to read the preface. I will just be mentioning here bullets. And for details, it is written in the code itself. So, there are seven editions from 1961 to year 2000. By the way, I hope and expect that all electrical practitioners here listening and watching have their PEC with them. It may be at home or in your study area. The important point here is that every electrical practitioner shall have a PEC code. Please invest to buy PEC book. Okay? If you don't have PEC, you need to buy one. To continue, PEC 2000 was the first PEC I bought. Second is the PEC 2009. 8 editions release. In 2016, I was updated that there was work undergoing by the IIE committee based on the 2014 NEC. And in 2016, a major plan to release the PEC-1 was on its way. But in September 2016, a release of NEC-2017 happened. And it was adopted immediately. With the strong leadership of Honorable Francis Mapile and Honorable Jaime Mendoza and the IIEE PEC Committee, PEC 2017 was released. Thanks. I bought it immediately and sa ngayon mukha nang madungis yung PEC ko because I read it more often together with some of the references I have. Now, what lies ahead we didn't know yet? If we are really following NEC releases, which is every three years, then we are late again. But since it took eight years from 2009 to have a 2017 major release, we expect a new release in the coming years ahead. 
To make sure we master the PEC 2017 cover to cover, I recommend that every IIEE chapter and every IIEE governor should put in their goal to develop PEC champions in every chapter. What I mean is this, to create lecture material similar to this so that electrical practitioners will easily understand PEC 2017. This should be the one goal of a regional IIEE governor and IIEE chapter president and board of directors. And it should be done year-round program. Do you agree? I hope you understand me. With the machinery that our organization have, they need to focus on this if they want all our electrical practitioner to move forward. New PEC will be coming. Yet, we never completed mastering the PEC 2007 that we have. Nakakalungkot, di ba? There are lots of social media topic about PEC. Yet, they fail to sustain the need of the electrical practitioner to understand PEC 2017 in a year timeline. So much of my wish. So, let us proceed to make it a reality. Our next slide is about how PEC 2017 was organized. Oops, teka lang. 15 minutes pass by. We cut this presentation for you to have some time to think and relax before proceeding with our continuation. Once you completed this series, an e-certificate of completion is available for you. You need to send me a personal message in my messenger because there is a requirement on how to get the e-certificate that you can use for self-application of CPD points. And as a proof that you already completed the videos here in the YouTube playlist about understanding PEC Series 1. See you on Part 2 of 3 of this Series 1 where we will discuss the structure of the code and the arrangement of the code. Thanks for watching.